one more iceberg video, this time on EA Sports. For those of you that still don't know, an iceberg is a list of little facts and tidbits that are separated by tiers in the iceberg. The lower down you go, the more obscure the fact is, or whatever. If you thought there's something I missed, I made another one of these, so check that out if you want to. All right, enough exposition that pads out the video length. Let's get started. Whenever you boot up an EA Sports game, you are greeted with the legendary EA Sports. It's in the game. This is a vast improvement over EA's previous attempts at an intro. I think I just shit my pants. The voice was supplied by a guy named Andrew Anthony. He did the voice for free and didn't even know his take was being used until years later when he overheard it one day. He would voice act for other EA Sports commercials, and he's actually the voice of the Geico commercials, which blew my mind harder than when I found out Chris Angel's magic wasn't real. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. The famous intro would become a meme years later, though your mileage may vary on if it's actually funny or not. E E E E E E E T E This was a feature that was put into a lot of old EA Sports games. Essentially what this was, was a section on the main menu where you can watch the credits for the game you were playing, or you can watch trailers for other EA Sports games. It's funny to me that you would think there would be more features here, but nope, here's a compressed as hell Madden trailer to watch at like 10 frames a second. EA Sports Big was a subdivision that had all those arcade games like the street games. The first game was SSX or Sledstorm, depending on how you look at things. Sledstorm lacks the EA Sports Big marketing, so I don't count it as one. With the acquisition of super mega baseball developer Metalhead Software and Codemasters, rumors have started to spark that the subdivision may be coming back. This is Madden's YouTube channel, but if you sort by old, it's like going through a time machine. The channel wasn't always just exclusive to Madden footage because all EA Sports games are here. You start to run into some obscure things like Facebreaker adverts that have Kimbo Slice and Snoop Dogg in them. You get to see how they look when their eyes all swollen shut and their lips are broken. Yeah, I hate it when people break their lips. <laughs> The EA UFC series has some fighter specific animations that you probably didn't know were in the game if you never used these specific fighters. When Brock Lesnar gets rocked, he flails around like he did against his fight with Cain Velasquez. Nate Diaz throws up his middle fingers in a triangle choke finish, and Jorge Masvidal pounds on the mat just like he did when he sent Ben Askren to the other world. Some WWE wrestlers had football aspirations, so some WWE guys made it into Madden games and NCAA games, like Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Sports games getting the remaster or re-release treatment is extraordinarily rare. NHL 94 is currently on Xbox Game Pass, meaning it's the only re-released game that's currently available from EA Sports. I believe, anyway. YouTuber Dimitri James uploaded a video play-by-play -play of the play where he scored a touchdown with Greg Jennings while he already had a broken leg. I have one of the most best offense in Madden history. Look at this shit. How is he running with a broken leg? Dog, he put the team on his back. Dog, let's go inside the mind of a Greg Jennings. Dog, I gotta do this shit. I put the team on my fucking back, though. My leg broke. I don't know how the fuck I'm running right now, though. Oh, shit. Darren Sharper, one of the most hardest hitting safeties in the league. This was such a viral video, it was referenced in a Madden 12 achievement called Put the Team on My Back, an achievement that requires a 99 yard touchdown pass to Greg Jennings. No broken leg though. The Skate series was a beloved skating series. Uh, hence the name. After Skate 3, the series was seemingly abandoned. Years would pass by and no skate game would ever be announced, and even worse, the studio behind the games would be shut down. This led to the Instagram of EA being completely taken over with Skate 4 comments. Hey, say what you want about this, but it may have actually worked because there was a new skate game that was announced. The Madden series is guilty of the old tradition of copying and pasting. 
Madden 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 all had the exact same Super Bowl victory celebrations, outside of a couple minor things like the lack of confetti. The UFC series has some wild glitches that happen. These gained popularity once YouTuber Tommy Toho made a video where he imitated UFC commentators Joe Rogan and Mike Goldberg. Welcome to our very first prelim of the night. Little Country has exited the cage to fight a cameraman. Look at how calm that cameraman is. He didn't even budge. Dude's a pro. Little Country trying to get back into the cage. It looks like he possibly forgot how to walk or use his arms, Joe. Yeah, he's trying to, but cages are tough. You know, you're sitting here watching this at home, you're like, why did he climb up the cage? It's not like that, it's a lot harder than it looks, and he can't just phase through the fencing. And he is phasing through the fencing, Joe. You all know about Madden and FIFA, but how about cricket? No, well, what about rugby? Bass fishing? Arena football? It was cool to have all these games, now it's just the same handful of series now. Speaking of glitches, this was a somewhat popular glitch that happened with FIFA games. Essentially what happens is that the players' physics blend together in a way that makes it look like they're kissing. Hey, if you feel uncomfortable, get over it. I had to Google search FIFA kiss. How do you think I feel? Most arcade cabinets are traditionally for arcadey over the top games, but Madden actually had a multitude of arcade cabinets, with each arcade cabinet being updated for the new season. This was way back when different consoles had different or exclusive features. When it comes to the PS3, most of these were just motion sensor 6-axis gimmicks that were better served to be turned off, but Fight Night Round 3 had a first-person mode on PS3 that was actually pretty good. That great counter hook. <laughs> oh, he goes down! He goes down! Can he get up after being put down for the first time? Regional covers have been a thing for sports games forever. For instance, the MLB The Show games have the Toronto Blue Jay players for the Canadian cover, and NBA 2K19 has Ben Simmons for the Australian cover. You could tell it's Australian because of the kangaroo. NBA Live in Japan obviously has legendary Japanese superstar basketball player Michael Jordan? Washington Wizards Jordan at that. Okay, I get that he's the biggest star in basketball, but why have them for exclusively the Japanese cover? I guess Space Jam was a hit out there. Both these series, especially NBA Jam, have long complicated histories that it seems Hideo Kojima wrote them. I'll give some super duper condensed version of this. Midway made NBA Jam for the arcades, while Acclaim ported the console version. Due to legal issues, Acclaim ended up with the rights to the series. Years would pass and Acclaim would eventually go bankrupt because good games is a foreign concept to them. EA would pick up the NBA Jam license and produce their own NBA Jam called uh, NBA Jam. You following me so far? This game would be on the Wii. PS3 and 360 versions would follow later and would be bundled with NBA Elite 11, which was EA's attempt to reboot the NBA Live series. But NBA Elite was cancelled, so that means no NBA Jam. But then they released NBA Jam as a downloadable title and then followed up with another edition a year later and could this be any more convoluted? NBA Jam from EA was actually really damn good. We would never get a sequel though, and the NBA Jam series has been in limbo ever since. As far as NFL Blitz goes, EA picked up the series when Midway went bankrupt and produced their own NFL Blitz game called, uh, NFL Blitz. This game wasn't received as well as their NBA Jam game because this game was a much more watered down version of Blitz where you can't even late hit the players. The Blitz series has been MIA since. Speaking of Limbo, EA's basketball series is in a purgatory right now. The series tried to reboot with the previously mentioned NBA Elite 11, but that game was canceled. Then the year after, there wasn't a game at all. Then the year after that, the NBA Live name was brought back, but that game was canceled. Finally, the series would return with NBA Live 14, but the series was received not all that well. NBA Live 14, 15, and 16 would be released to mediocre reception which leads to NBA Live 17 getting canceled. The series would once again return for NBA Live 18 and 19, but then 20 was canceled, and we have no idea when this series will be coming back, or if it's even coming back at all. This series had more returns and departures than the damn Undertaker. 
After the release of UFC 4, EA decided to implement in-game ads that flash on the screen during replays, on the octagon, and occasionally in the in-game graphics. Players have sharpened their pitchforks to tell EA what a terrible thing they've done. Eventually, EA took away the ads. Now, I have a hot take here. This wasn't really all that much of a big deal. These ads are intrusive in a way that stops gameplay. In sports games, you are bombarded with ads already. Like, okay, they took away this Amazon ad, but you still got Toya tires down there, and Reebok, and Body Armor, and ESPN+. Sports games are a different story because the sports games these games are often simulating have these products as well. So in a weird way, these advertisements actually enhance the experience depending on how they're implemented. For an example of this, City Field in real life has the Coca-Cola corner in right field, but in MLB The Show, it's just a sign that says The Show. It's kind of immersion breaking in my opinion. Either way, being upset at ads is perfectly fine. But you should also send an angry mob at Death Stranding for having monster energy drinks, Mario Kart 8 for having unfitting Mercedes cars to drive, Final Fantasy 15 for having cup noodles, almost every single Metal Gear game, blah blah blah, you, you get the point. The first 100,000 copies of PGA Tour 99 had a file you can only access on PC. The file was called zzdummy.dat. When opening this file, you are greeted to Jesus vs. Santa, which is the predecessor to the South Park series. An EA employee snuck the clip into the disc as a joke, but EA didn't find that joke funny and recalled all the copies, with new copies not having this clip. This was a website where players could create their own avatar, discuss in forums, polls, and submit cool plays where the other players can comment on it. There's really no footage on this, and using the Wayback Machine just makes everything look like a damn decoding puzzle. EA produced top 10 videos from players' submissions. You want to know how dated this is? One person's username has Ponage in it. What's more uncomfortable, someone having Ponage as their username or the way how the host pronounces it? Uber Ponage, 1009. EA Sports Game Show was a free online trivia game show. The game had hosts that hosted the trivia sections where players would compete against each other and interact with the hosts via polls, text chat, and phone calls. There is no footage of this outside of promotional stuff. The game show would only last about nine months before being abandoned. Game show was a great experiment. It was a pilot program for us to try and get a community involved in different ways. Um, it resonated with a lot of people, but eventually it didn't get enough traction for us to be able to really invest where I think we need to do to take it to the next level. We all know about Ultimate Team and loot boxes. It's gambling. There's no way around it. Kerry Hopkins, Vice President of Legal and Government Affairs at EA, was questioned about the ethical qualms of loot boxes by a member of parliament, and she described these as quite ethical and fun. And she goes on to say that they are surprise mechanics. Listen, lady, I'll give you this. Taking all my money and most likely giving me shit in return is definitely a surprise, sure, but why implement such a shitty surprise in your games? You know what's not a surprise? The headlines this quote got after you said it. In Fight Night Round 3's career mode, you upgrade your fighter along with your cornermen. One of these cornermen being your trainer, and you can get the Burger King as your trainer. The Burger King being your trainer is a contradiction if I've ever heard one. Game Face was a feature by EA where you can import your face into select EA sports games. You would have to take pictures of yourself and upload them to EA's site. After doing that, the game would spit out a face based on your photos. This didn't really work all that well because in order to get decent results, you need perfect angles with bright white rooms, with great lighting, no shadows, preferably with a non-phone camera and the moon, the stars, and all the planets need to align. Even then, the game could give a face that looks like a grenade blew up in it. There are some Korean exclusive online games out there. NBA Street had an exclusive game for Korea, 
And most notable of the lot is MVP Baseball Online, which took the engine from the long gone MVP Baseball franchise and made a quote unquote new game for the Korean market. It's essentially MVP Baseball with a new coat of paint and teams, but interesting nonetheless. Characters from the Super Mario franchise appear in some EA games. They appear in NBA Street Volume 3 and SSX On Tour. It makes sense to put them in the over-the-top arcade games because look at these friggin' guys. Mario doesn't even come up to Shaq's kneecaps. The oddest Nintendo cameo is in the GameCube version of Fight Night Round 2. There is a port of Super Punch-Out you could play, which is so left field, but even odder is that if you beat Punch-Out, you unlock this 100% cursed playable Little Mac. Nowadays, you can't even find an EA game on Nintendo platforms, let alone Nintendo characters in an EA game. E3 is the gaming convention to learn about the latest games and maybe even consoles. One of the last things you would want to see at E3 is Pele coming out at E3's press conference and boring everyone for almost 10 minutes. This guy is just like, hey Pele, sell our freaking soccer game. And Pele's just like, the football. It's too much bumpy, too much struggle. Soccer is a morning thing. A lot of things happen, you know. Uh, I think you, uh, I told you uh, about the. I score a lot of goals by Sweden. To the blonde girl, she started to put them on my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand well, you know, my, 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 my older players. Because we have interpreted. It was also, look at this dude's face just as Pele's leaving. That's a dick thing to do, but let's be honest, we've all been there once. YouTuber Levinator25 encountered a glitch in PGA Tour 08 where Tiger Woods would stand on the water when taking a shot. We got the new Tiger Woods 08, best game ever. Got the new feature, the, the Jesus shot. Oh my God. He would dub this glitch the Jesus shot and not the Chris Angel shot to the disappointment of my 14 year old self. EA would see this video and make a commercial out of it where the actual Tiger Woods would walk onto water to make a shot. This is actually pretty cool that they did this, but I can't help but find it funny that this scenario is pretty much one guy documenting a glitch he found, and EA saying in response, uh, nah, -uh, that's not a glitch, that's actually a feature. This must be a part of those surprise mechanics I've heard about. Competitive Madden player Joke has a very appropriate name considering he won the 2020 Madden Bowl with a punter at the quarterback position. It sounds stupid, and that's because it is. The science behind doing this was that Joke went with a purely run-based offense. Because Joke never passes, and I say that literally, he's run 130 plays in this tournament. He has passed not even once, and in fact, that's a punter at quarterback. Tress Way hands it off. So instead of wasting a valuable pick on a quarterback, he just put a punter and a lowly rated Eli Manning at the QB position. The punter is left-handed, which means he's faster at handing off the ball to a specific side. You could say Madden is a lot of things. Simulation football would definitely not be one of them. Aaron Hernandez was the superstar tight end of the New England Patriots. He was to be featured in NCAA 11 with an Ultimate Team card. The problem with this was that Hernandez was being accused of murder and EA doesn't want to feature people who are accused of that, so they eventually removed this card from the game. All forms of online interaction come with their own brand of assholes, but it seems the assholiest assholes congregate to the EA NHL games as they use blatantly racist and offensive names. Now in sports games, if you're offensive, that's a good thing. But if you're offensive like these idiots are, it's not. Articles were written about this, and EA themselves even had to step in and make a statement at one point. There's a Reddit thread that has some personal stories about how bad a racism is in the EA NHL community. It's an interesting read, so I'll link it in the description. 
So you know about those ultimate team modes I mentioned before, right? Well, it seems that there may be some dark secrets that are more plentiful than your internet browser's history. So what's happening here is that apparently EA employees were selling rare cards behind the company's back for hundreds to thousands of dollars. Twitter users posted these interactions they had with supposed EA employees. And sure enough, they got the stuff they paid for as promised. Obviously, this is a huge deal because players who don't spend money were already at a gigantic disadvantage. Now they're at an even bigger one because you could just pay to get any random card you want. EA would make a statement, but it seems nothing ever came from it. Either way, these games are pay to win. Only now it just depends on who you were giving your money to. Oh, this is out of character for me. But I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching. I mean, I know it's been a while since the last video, but I got really sick and it just delayed everything and personal stuff and blah, blah, blah. I won't bore you with the details, but thank you guys. And if you're new to this video, I made other icebergs and I make videos on sports video games. Check that shit out if you like it. The next video is going to be, I'll be reviewing the entire SXX series, the entire mainline series anyway. So stick around for that. Also, the video after that, I either want to do a wrestling game video or a basketball game video. I don't know. Throw out some suggestions, I guess. I don't know. We're almost at 2,000 subscribers. I honestly can't believe that. Like, it's insane. See ya.